Hello, my name is Jennifer Burley and I am a PharmD candidate of the class of 2022 and today I will be going over the medication hydralazine, also known as aprezolin. I will now discuss a brief overview of hydralazine. Hydralazine is also known as aprezolin, but the brand name is no longer available in the U.S. It belongs to the vasodilators drug class is used to treat high blood pressure, but can also be used in patients with heart failure and in patients that develop severe high blood pressure during pregnancy and or after giving birth. And it works by relaxing the blood vessels so blood can flow easier throughout the body. I will now go over some patient counseling points for hydralazine. Hydralazine can be taken with or without food, but it is important to take it the same way each time. You would keep taking this medication as instructed by your doctor even if you begin to feel well. This medicine may cause dizziness, therefore it is important to avoid driving or doing anything that requires alertness until you know how the medication will affect you. To lower the chance of feeling dizzy or passing out after using the medication, rise slowly if you have been sitting or lying down and be careful going up and down the stairs. Talk to your doctor before you drink alcohol while taking this medication. And then talk with your doctor before using any over-the-counter products that may raise your blood pressure. And these include cough or cold drugs, diet pills, stimulants, pain relievers such as ibuprofen, and some natural products too. Check your blood pressure regularly as you have been instructed by your doctor. And have your blood work checked by your doctor if you are using this medication for a long time. Tell your doctor if you are pregnant, plan on becoming pregnant, or are breastfeeding while taking this medication. And if you miss a dose of hydralazine, then take the dose as soon as you remember, but do not take two doses at the same time or take extra doses. I will now discuss common adverse effects of hydralazine, which include headache, loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fast heart rate, and chest pain. Now I will discuss serious adverse effects for hydralazine, which include very low blood pressure, fever, dizziness or disorientation, swelling in your arms or legs, numbness, tingling, prickling or itching of your skin, feeling down or not like yourself, changes in appetite, feeling worried or on edge, not being interested in activities you normally enjoy, skin rash, redness to your skin, fast heart rate, chills, joint pain, trouble breathing, severe constipation, and trouble urinating. These adverse effects should subside over time, but if you continually experience these effects, be sure to seek immediate medical attention. Next, I will discuss the FDA-approved indications and dosing recommendations for hydralazine. For the indication hypertension, a patient would take 10 mg oral tablet four times daily for two to four days, then 25 mg four times daily for the remainder of the week, up to a maximum of 300 mg per day. For the off-label indication heart failure, the patient would take 25 mg oral tablet three times daily in combination with asorbicide dinitrate with a target dose of 75 mg three times daily. For the other off-label indication hypertensive emergency, the patient will be given 10 to 20 mg given IV or IM every 4 to 6 hours as needed up to a maximum of 40 mg per dose. Your doctor might consider combining the hydralazine with a beta blocker since the hydralazine is associated with severe increased heart rate when trying to lower the blood pressure. And then finally, for the off-label indication, hypertensive emergency in pregnancy or postpartum, the patient would be given 5 or 10 mg IV and repeat with 5 to 10 mg doses every 20 minutes if the blood pressure does not reach the goal. Now I will go over formulations and dosing adjustments for hydralazine. Formulations. The brand name Aprezolin has been discontinued in the U.S., but the generic hydralazine oral tablets are available in 10 mg, 25 mg, 50 mg, and 100 mg. And then the generic hydralazine injection solution vial is available in 20 mg per ml, and it comes in a 1 ml vial. For renal dose adjustments, patients with altered kidney function, there is no dose adjustment required. 
and for hepatic dose adjustments, there are no doses adjustments required. Mechanism of action of hydralazine. Hydralazine is a direct vasodilator, as I mentioned before. The exact mechanism of action is not completely understood. However, it is hypothesized to be associated with maintaining calcium balance inside the cells. Hydralazine inhibits inositol triphosphate, or IP3, and myosin phosphorylation in the smooth muscle cells. This reduces peripheral vascular resistance and leads to a release of epinephrine and norepinephrine, which as a result increases venous return and cardiac output and ultimately results in a decrease in blood pressure. Warnings, precautions, and contraindications of hydralazine. Warnings. Warnings include hydralazine-induced lupus-like syndrome, also known as HILS, has been reported in patients on doses greater than or equal to 200 mg for a long term greater than or equal to 3 months, but it is reversible upon discontinuation. Signs and symptoms of HILS include a red butterfly rash across the face, joint pain, muscle pain, fever, tiredness, loss of appetite, weight loss, chest pain, swelling in the face, hands or feet, and pink or dark colored urine. If you experience any of these signs or symptoms, report them to your doctor immediately. Other warnings include cerebrovascular accidents and suspected coronary artery disease, or CAD, mitral valvular disease because it may increase the pulmonary pressure in patients and lead to complications, and renal impairment. Contraindications for hydralazine include patients with hypersensitivity reactions to hydralazine or any component of the medication, coronary artery disease, mitral valve rheumatic heart disease, and patients with breastfeeding. Monitoring parameters for hydralazine includes monitoring the blood pressure. The blood pressure should be closely monitored specifically when patients are given IV hydralazine because they may experience a sudden drop in blood pressure. A target blood pressure of less than 130 over 80 is recommended. Other parameters include heart rate monitoring, complete blood count or CBC should also be obtained prior to initiating therapy and then periodically during therapy of hydralazine. And then finally, an ANA titer should be obtained prior to initiating therapy to establish a baseline and periodically during prolonged treatment of hydralazine. Because if a patient develops HILS or hydralazine-induced lupus syndrome, then the serum ANA titer will show a positive result for HILS. These are my references. Thank you for listening to my presentation.